Good morning, church. I wanted to take a little time with you this morning and share with you some of the things that I've been learning. And uh, considering this is the first day of our Indiana state lockdown, basically, I thought it might be good for us to spend a little time together. So what I want to do is hopefully, if I can continue this, is spend a little time each morning trying to encourage you with something that I've read out of the scripture. So today, I was looking at Matthew chapter 14. And I want to take you to this passage now. In Matthew chapter 14, uh, the whole chapter, I'm going to skip over some of the pieces, but we read these words. It says, On Herod's birthday, the daughter of Herodias danced for the guests and pleased Herod so much that she promised, excuse me, that he promised with an oath to give her whatever she asked. Prompted by her mother, she said, Give me here on a platter, the head of John the Baptist. The king was distressed, but because of his oaths and his dinner guests, he ordered that her request be granted and had John beheaded in the prison. His head was brought in on a platter and given to the girl who carried it to her mother. John's disciples came and took his body and buried it. Then they went and told Jesus. Now this is a a tragic situation. Here's King Herod, And he's been intimidated by John, who was calling him out because Herod had taken in his brother's wife as his own. And uh, apparently Herod didn't like being um, called out by John. So anyway, he put John in prison and Herodias, uh, this woman that Herod had taken in, decided that she wanted to have John killed. So it's a tragic story. It's a sad story. But I think what makes it most sad is that line towards the end of the story where Matthew tells us John's disciples came and took John's body and buried it. Then they went and told Jesus. Now remember, Jesus was John's cousin. Jesus and John were on the same mission together. Slightly different. John's mission was to tell the world to prepare for Jesus. Jesus' mission was to tell the world the kingdom of God had come in him. But nonetheless, when Jesus heard what John, what had happened to John, I'm certain that Jesus was wounded on the inside, distraught, maybe, saddened at least. In fact, we read these words. It says, when Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by a boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Now, I think a lot can be made of Jesus healing sick people, especially right now, as a lot of us are worried about sicknesses. But there's something more important here, I think. Jesus was sad. He went to a solitary place. He even took a boat to get there. But the crowds followed him. And when he saw them, he had compassion on them and healed they're sick. I find this just both heartbreaking that Jesus in a moment of sadness, in a moment of solitude, would suddenly find himself in a place where he has to care for others. But at the same time, I take a lot of comfort out of this, that Jesus, even though he wants to spend some time on his own, even though he wants to spend some private time, even though he needs some private time, He has compassion on the crowds. In fact, this is the story where Jesus is hanging out with the crowds for so long that it becomes nighttime and none of them have eaten and they they don't have time to go all the way back into town and come back out and hear more of Jesus' teaching. And so Jesus actually feeds the entire crowd of people right there with just a few loaves and a few fish. It's an amazing story of Jesus demonstrating tangible care to these people even though he himself wanted to get some time alone. Well, anyway, at the end of the meal, after everybody has eaten, it's now time for Jesus to send everybody away. So he sends his disciples away first. He says, okay, you guys get back in the boat and head over across the, uh, across the lake, across the sea, to the other land that they wanted to go to. And Jesus is going to stay behind and dismiss the crowds privately. He does so. And then we read these words. It says, after he dismissed them, He went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. 
Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. This is Jesus. He dismisses the crowds, and he finally gets some alone time. The crowds aren't with him. The disciples aren't with him. He's just by himself, getting some time to pray. But sometime in the middle of the night, he opens his eyes, he looks out onto the water, he notices that uh, by the dim light of the moon, the boat is out there in the middle of the water and they're struggling to row. And we read these words. It says, shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Again, this is Jesus in a moment where it would have been great for him to just spend some time alone. He sees a group of people in need and he goes out to them. And when they're afraid of him, he says, take courage, it's I, don't be afraid. Well, of course, Peter, he's the guy who always steps up and puts his foot in his mouth. He says, Lord, if it's you, Tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. Then Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. <sighs> How many times does Jesus have to come through for other people? Well, he does again. Immediately, it says, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshiped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The story doesn't end there. When they'd crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized Jesus, they sent word to all the surrounding country. People brought all their sick to him and begged him to let the sick just touch the edge of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. You know, I'm just continually amazed that Jesus is the person who says, even in those times when he would want to be silent and worry about himself and, and pay attention to his own needs, Jesus always seems to be looking out for the needs of others. Listen, I know this is one of those times where you and I are confused, we're concerned, we're a little bit worried about our own needs, we're worried about our own health, worried about our own um, ability to maintain as much of a normal life. Some of us are even worried about our jobs. I just want to encourage you. This is the time where, A, it's okay to need to spend some time alone. I would invite you to spend that time in prayer. Read God's word, spend some time in prayer, relax in God's presence as much as you possibly can. But also, let's make sure we take this time to keep our eyes open, our ears open, to the needs of the people around us. Sometimes it's gonna seem overwhelming, but God might be calling us to pass out food. Sometimes it might seem overwhelming, but God might be calling us to just be someone who walks into the middle of a storm to give our hand to someone else. Or maybe it's just some people who need a glimpse of Jesus. Maybe you're the boat to carry Jesus to that person. I'm not exactly sure what these next few weeks are going to hold for us, but I do know this. In the midst of us being concerned about ourselves, let's also be people who represent Jesus well. Open up your eyes, open up your ears, open up your heart to God, to what he's doing in your heart, to what he's doing in this world, as confusing as it sometimes may be, and open up your ears and eyes and heart to the needs of the people around us. Let's make sure we're ready to step in if needed, and let's take advantage of the opportunities we have to be a blessing to others. Today, even from your home, be a blessing to some people around you, be a blessing to some people in your life. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.